we got on to John Nolan at like, probably at like 12.30 uh, at night, like 12.30 a.m. Uh, we got on to John Nolan coming in from Chicago on Tuesday, that would have been like Wednesday morning. And I, 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 I started seeing all these familiar things. I started seeing the Capitol. We drove by an apartment that I lived in in college and stuff. And I was like, that's right. Like, this is gonna go fine. It's gonna be fun! Uh, sold out, dude. It's I mean, more than, more than more than I know. I was standing room all night. This is fucking insane. I can't believe it. Like, I thought, you know, at the beginning of the week, we had like 30 tickets sold. And I was like, okay, if we get 50 people in this room, it's gonna be a show. And then, like, out of nowhere, everybody showed up. It's insane. It's insane. I'm gonna leave you alone. He's gonna just keep filming, and uh, he'll follow you up like halfway. Okay. Is that just like to the left of the stage? Um, the, the aisle is to the left. Yeah. Love you, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, lose your minds for Mr. Martin Hen. Roll out the barrel. We'll have a barrel of fun. Roll out the barrel. We've got the blues on the run. We had 30 tickets sold to this on Monday. Where'd you fuckers come from? <laughs> the fuck? Oh my God, I had a panic attack in Chicago. Oh, it's terrifying. I've been having panic attacks all day. This is wild. It's just been talking to myself and nervous shits all afternoon, you know, just exclusively. It's so dope. I'm so happy to be back here in Madison. Give it up for Rich and uh, Andre, Bill. <laughs> guys are my friends. I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick people that are really good friends of mine that are just slightly less funnier than me. Like, that's a perfect sweet spot. Sweet spot. It's dope to be back here. It's great to be back in Madison. Uh, I always overcompensate every time I come to Wisconsin. Every time I get back in my home state, I always just go overboard. Like yesterday, I bought so much cheese at a quick trip. The gas station attendant told me to be careful. Does that ever happen to you guys? You guys ever buy so much dairy, a stranger gets concerned for the rest of your life? That was me, that was me. I live in Austin now though. I've been living in Austin for about four years and uh, I'll always be from here, but I think I'm in Austinite now. Austinites don't like hearing that. Austinites are very proud of being born and raised there. They call themselves unicorns. But I don't think that like being in Austinite is about like growing up there. I think being an Austinite is about what happens to you after you move to Austin, right? So for example, I'm an Austinite because since I moved there, I grew a mustache, I got a half sleeve tattoo, and I adopted a pit bull with a bite record from a shelter. Like, I'm from Austin, you know? I'm from Austin. I only do cocaine if it's farm to table. Like, I'm, I'm from Austin, I'm from there. I'm in a non-monogamous relationship with a witch, okay? I'm from Austin, I'm from Austin. Some of you guys didn't get that last tag. Listen, my chakras are aligned and I got crystals in my ass. I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. It's the crystals, uh, definitely. It's cool, it's weird. It's wild like traveling from Austin like, and telling people you're from there because you always get the weird thing back. You always get, oh, Austin. You're yeah, Austin, Texas, keeping it weird. You guys are keeping it weird in Austin, Texas. I've never been, I've seen some Buzzfeed lists. Just keeping it weird in Austin, Texas. You're in some city like fucking Tulsa, you know, which is one of those that doesn't matter. Their only exports are just like lawn furniture and racism, that's it, that's all I got. But you do, you come from a weird town, Austin, it's weird there, weird. It's weird. But I don't know if you guys know this or not, Austin, not that weird anymore, right? Austin had a tech boom not too long ago. So all Austin is is 25-year-old yuppies starting companies none of us asked for. That's all it is down there now. You get downtown, it's just a lot of man buns and unearned confidence. That's all they got down there. It's usually a guy on one of those like rentable scooters flying by just Yeah, you know, I'm developing this app with my college buddy Pratish. Uh, we're in the third stage of investments. It's pretty exciting. Uh, it's a subscription-based app. All you do is you give us $5 a month and then I write horoscopes for your dog. And that's all, 
That's all Austin. You guys ever been to Arkansas? Because Arkansas is fucking weird. <laughs> Y'all ever been scared of an entire state at once? I have, all right? I did one weekend of shows in Little Rock. The whole audience got there, and I was looking out at everybody, and the only thing I could think was like, oh, good. Everybody brought their underbite. Wonderful. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I got to do New Mexico, too, which was pretty dope. Got to do New Mexico. New Mexico is gorgeous. New Mexico is like one of the prettiest places I've ever been. It's beautiful there. Uh, New Mexico, um, a little bit methy for me. You know? Just one too many, like, tents in the middle of nowhere in the desert, right? You just look out, you're like, hey, you guys aren't training for Coachella out there, are you? It's just scary drugs the whole time. I had to go through a border checkpoint while I was in New Mexico, and this woman I was hanging out with like terrified me. She was like, listen, these border checkpoints, they're no joke, all right? They're gonna have dogs that can smell drugs in your car. They're gonna have cameras that can see inside for any contraband. There's gonna be a border patrol officer right there, and he's gonna ask you some questions. If you mess any of these steps up, you're going to jail, like immediately, right? So I left everything that I had with this woman in Las Cruces. I left uh, a bag of weed, a grinder, and my Green Bay Packers pipe. Go Pack Go. That's right. That's right. They hated it when I did that joke in Chicago. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's like, you know, draft a quarterback and shut the fuck up. Uh, so we're like, you know, we're heading to the checkpoint and I see the signs warning me about the dogs. I see the cameras that can look in my car and I get all the way up to the booth and the border patrol officer gets out of the booth and he looks at me and all I hear this guy say is, hey, are you US citizen? And I just looked back at him and I was like, wait, wait what? Because I smoked as much of my weed as I could <laughs> before I left it. And he just looks back at me and he goes, all right, you're good. And that was it. That was the whole checkpoint. Randy, you didn't seem to care that much. Listen, I lost $17 a weed that day, all right? And my Green Bay Packers pipe, go Pack Go. It's cool, it's fun touring. We did a little tour like on the way up here and it's wild touring when you're at like this level of comedy. Cause sometimes you'll show up to like one of your shows at a bar and nobody in that bar knew there was gonna be a comedy show that night. So I got to do Amarillo not too long ago. That's like North rural Texas. If you don't know anything about Amarillo, when you get there, everyone who lives in Amarillo just looks like a walking ashtray. Like every single one of them. It's like the saddest Beauty and the Beast transformation you could ever think of. So I get to the show and uh, the guy running the show comes up to me. He's like, Martin, just to let you know, uh, there's Darts League and there's Pool League tonight. Uh, so we're gonna push the show back and wait for these competitive games to be over. Fun thing about Amarillo is after people stop playing like darts and pool competitively, they just keep playing darts and pool, all right? <laughs> it's 9.30 in Amarillo, there's nothing else to do. Cracker Barrel closes at eight, like they're in it for the long haul. So they go to shut the music off for, uh, for the comedy show and as soon as they shut the music off, this guy looks up from his darts game and just goes, what the fuck, you're gonna turn off White Snake? <laughs> and then he left, he left forever. <laughs> they lost business because of me that night. <laughs> it was like, there he went, again on his own, you know? <laughs> it's all right. A lot more White Snake fans than I anticipated tonight. That was, I gotta reconsider my demographic here. Touring with other comics is always fun. It always feels like summer camp to me, you know? Where it's these other kids and you might not hang out with them a lot during the school year, but now you're in this like kind of one little experience together and you're just having fun. You're having fun in these new areas and it's just all like, you know, you're just kind of joking around the whole time and goofing off. It's so different doing those things on the road compared to doing them when you're kind of in your home base and in your own realm. We're gonna hit the farmer's market a little bit and the capital. <laughs> okay. And uh, <laughs> feeling good about that. <laughs> We're the Storm in the capital, yeah. <laughs> 
But yeah, just check out some funky shit at the uh, at the farmer's market here. Yeah. Are you guys gonna get anything? They're just thinking. We're just browsing. Just browsing. Yeah. The farmer's market is such a wild, like, not maybe wild's not the right word for it, but it's very eclectic. Can I do uh, one big loaf of the cheese bread, please? Yeah. Awesome. Oh my god. You guys see this? So this is spicy bread? Yeah. So you just like take some. Yeah, I feel like Aladdin. <laughs> I got some bread. I'm gonna go fucking cheer. Yeah, get in there. There's probably cheese in here. There's cheese in there. Are you sure? I'm positive. I don't see it. Well, you have faith. Where's the biggest farmer's market in America? Dane County Farmer's Market. Yeah, it's this one. Ah. Largest producers only market in the country. Wow, all right. Bag or anything? No, this is the best day of my life. Where did uh. Like you don't get much more Madison than like the farmers market. You know what I mean? This is such a, such a like a like a signature uh, event or like a signature uh, component of the city and especially of downtown. It is. It's fun touring. Uh, this tour I've been doing with a really good buddy of mine. His name's Colton. He was on the show earlier. If you were here for that, uh, great guy. I love Colton. Um, he is. Uh, he's gay. He's one of the gays, but he's an outstanding gay. He's like one of my favorite gays. He's amazing. He's a top three bottom. Like, I love this guy. And it was an incredible trip because like I have never been around gay culture like that. It was like an immersion class in Fabulous. Like it was, it was so informational, you know? Like I started the trip as just this kind of, you know, straight laced white guy that never had a gay experience. And now, I know half the lyrics to the Little Mermaid soundtrack, yeah. Yeah. You guys all thought I caught a dick, didn't you? Yeah. You all thought I caught a dick. I didn't. I didn't catch a dick. I might have. We drank a lot. Uh, gay dudes figured dating apps out, though, right? Gay dudes are so much better at dating apps than straights are. Because, like, as a straight, you got to do what? You download one of three conventional apps, and you swipe between the people you like and the people you don't like. Um, it's always, for me, it's always like 90% of the people I see on there, I'm like, I don't fucking like you, you know? I know for women, it's, uh, it's the guy holding the fish. That's always the deal breaker. Uh, you know, just like that. For me personally, it's always the over-religious women. Like, I can't, do, I can't do women that are too Christian, you know? It drives me nuts. Like, if I see a bio and it starts with, just so you know, in my life, God comes first. Just a heads up, if we go any further, God comes first. Jesus comes first in my life. Praise him, Jesus comes first. And I see that and I just, I gotta swipe left. I gotta swipe left every time. Cause in my head, I'm like, man, listen, Jesus doesn't come first, all right? I come first and then I apologize a bunch, okay? <laughs> yeah. Jesus never comes first and then cries on the side of the bed and asks you not to touch him. That's my move, that's my move. But gay dudes, gay dudes figured dating apps out. They crushed it, all right? Because what gay dudes did was they made a dating app for every type of dude you could possibly get it, like, be attracted to. You just download that one app and you work backwards from that. It's a la carte dick, it's, it's fucking genius. <laughs> so I'll give you guys some examples, right? Uh, one of them is called uh, Scruff. And scruff's where you want a guy who's a little bit older and you kind of want them to have a beard, okay? One of them's called Growler. Growler's where you want a guy to be eh, kind of a little bit younger and you want him to have a beard. <laughs> hey. You would crush on Growler. You'd destroy on Growler. I don't know how much you spent on drinks so far tonight. They could have been free, all right? <laughs> Yeah. You could just be neck deep in twinks right now, dude. I swear to God. One of them's called Bear Hunt. I know what you guys are thinking. Bear Hunt. Oh, man, that's got to be for, like, the hairiest dudes, right? Not the case. Bear Hunt is just an app where you can find another guy that's willing to blow you in the parking lot of a Cabela's Sporting Goods. That's all. 
That's all Bear Hines is. <laughs> One of them's called Hole. I'm done. That's the whole name. Hole. 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 We're sitting on this for a second. Hole. You get on Hole, you better come to play, all right? Hole is not a dating app for like cute first dates. You don't match with a guy on Hole and then go play putt putt. All right? It's a different kind of hole in one on that app. They don't even send nudes on Hole, they send x rays, okay? You gotta make sure your bones have the structural integrity for the rest of the night. You better be built like a bridge if you're on hole. I did some, uh, some research on hole, some digging, if you will. I was like, oh, hole. Maybe that's just a cute app where guys talk about Shia LaBeouf movies they like. <laughs> Wasn't what it is. Wasn't what it is. I have been dipping my toes in the dating pool a little bit since I got down to Austin. Just dipping my toes in the dating pool. Thank you, but not you, not him. Uh, <laughs> actually, I met him on Hole. Uh, it's a lie. Yeah, thanks for coming out. We'll talk about Shia LaBeouf movies after this. I, uh, I have a game that I play when I go on first dates, though. I have a game that I play. It's a game we all know. It's a game we all love. Uh, some of us call it America's pastime. It's the age-old game, fuck, marry, kill. Right? Yeah. Now I use the same three people every time I play, because I think those answers should fill themselves in. I use Dick Cheney, Yoda, and Bigfoot. That's right. I'm giving you guys a second. I want you to help me out with one of them. Okay, so in unison, help me out with this one. Who would you guys kill? Perfect. It always takes Texas a lot longer to say Dick Cheney. <laughs> they always choke on the dick, like they can't. <laughs> so you kill Dick Cheney, right? You kill Dick Cheney. I don't know how much you guys know about Dick Cheney. Turns out he's pretty hard to kill. <laughs> yeah. Dick Cheney treats hearts like they're samples at Costco, okay? <laughs> You can just go next Sunday and get a new one, it's fine. I don't even think they take the old heart out of Dick Cheney anymore. I think they're just jamming them in there like it's the last day of vacation and they bought too many t-shirts. Yeah. So you kill Dick Cheney. I don't know how you kill Dick Cheney. I don't know if it's like a wooden stake to the heart. I don't know if you have to cut off his IV that's just full of Pedialyte and orphan blood, but you kill Dick Cheney. You kill Dick Cheney. Next, you marry Yoda. That's the sensible choice. He's a little bit older. He sowed his wild oats, his wild yotes. I had to get one for me in there, and that was it. He's got two jobs, which is good, you know, financial stability. He's the head of the Jedi Council, and he's a member of the Old Republic. But I feel like if you married Yoda and had kids, he'd give those jobs up and be a stay-at-home dad so you could get back in the workforce, right? Just crush that real estate exam, Janine. You got it. Even if you don't, sell Herbalife to your friends from high school. I believe in you. Thank you. Uh, your kids are going to grow up um, dyslexic if, uh, if you let Yoda raise them. But cross that bridge. Uh, you get to it when you will. I don't know. I I only saw the first one. Those movies sucked. Uh, <laughs> next, hey, ladies and gentlemen, listen, there's only one option left. There's only one thing left to do and we all know what it is, right? You fuck Bigfoot. You fuck Bigfoot. You fuck Bigfoot because none of your friends will ever top that story, okay? You win every brunch you go to for the rest of your life. It doesn't matter what happened, you know? Your friend Chelsea could come in hot with a great one. Right? Just, you know, I had such a rough week at work. Stacy has been trying to get me fired. She harasses me. Everybody sees it. Nobody says anything. They're all against me. And I came home on Friday and Chad, <sighs> Chad, Chad had rose petals into the bedroom. 
When I got in there, bucket of champagne on ice. I looked on the bed, two tickets to Book of Mormon for that very night. <laughs> and we had the most magical evening and we got home from the show and we didn't fuck, okay? We didn't bang. <laughs> Nobody clapped cheeks. <laughs> we made love. We connected. One of us was crying, I'm still not sure which one it was. <laughs> and you can just lay in the cut. And then the next time she goes to take a bite of her vegan gluten-free quiche. <laughs> you can be like, yeah, Chelsea, that does sound pretty wild. That sounds almost as wild as that one time I fucked Bigfoot. <laughs> Rose petals to the bedroom. Pfft. I was penetrated by a beast whose very existence is in question. <laughs> Book of Mormon. Psh. I had 50 shades of foot for a whole fucking weekend. I used to like walk through the Capitol to get to work and stuff like that. So like I walked through this building every day for like two or three years. Do you remember how to get up to the rotunda? I can't remember how to get up. There's like another level up. I can't remember how to get outside, but we're gonna figure it out. Oh, that's just distant stuff. Uh, you guys know the direction? I think we just go up some stairs and then we, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think we go up this way. We gotta find out how to get outside. I totally forgot how to do that. Yeah, let's keep going this way. Here we go. Activation. Take left and up the stairs. No, this is a different one, but it looks the same. I feel like, I feel like we are looking for like Nancy Pelosi right now or something. Yeah. Okay. Wait, did we just do a big ass circle? Cool. Oh, hey guys. It's always so cool coming home. Like, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever come back to live in Madison, but it's just such a, such an important part of everything for me. I started here because I grew up here. You know, it all happened because of my time and experience in Madison. Like, I owe it so much. It's awesome. It's, uh, I feel like dating apps are like the go-to method for millennials, which I am. I am a millennial. Do we have millennials in the crowd tonight? <laughs> All right. A little more enthusiastic than I'm used to from my generation. That's fine. It's cool. We're like the hated generation right now, though, right? Everybody hates millennials. And I don't think that's a novelty in this country. I think that as a country, historically, we always hate whatever generation is, is in this age range, right? Because it happened to baby boomers. When baby boomers were our age, everyone was like, ah, we hate baby boomers. And baby boomers were like, whatever, we don't care, free love, you know? And then it happened to Generation X, and everyone was like, ah, we hate Generation X. And Generation X was like, whatever, we don't care, fucking nothing matters, you know? <laughs> and now it's our turn, and everyone's like, ah, we hate millennials. And I feel like millennials as a group, we're all just like, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> I totally get it, you know? I'm on three medications because I hate myself. <laughs> they say we're the entitled generation, right? Millennials are the most entitled generation. I don't think that's true either. I think we've been entitled as a country from the get-go. Um, the Bill of Rights is entitled. Like, the Bill of Rights has entitlement in it. The Bill of Rights says that we have the right to what? Life liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I've never met a millennial who thinks they deserve all three of those things. Uh, I'd settle for affordable housing and avocado toast. Like, I'm, I'm easy. I'm easy. I think the founding fathers were way more entitled than millennials have ever been. The founding fathers were slave owners that didn't want to pay taxes. That's the most entitled shit I can come up with. That's a bunch of dudes in a room like, wait a minute, you mean we gotta give up money that we made from not paying anybody to work? <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> Let's go throw some coffee in a lake or something like that, I don't know. <laughs> I slept through a lot of my history classes. 
And I think that the uh, founding fathers would have been shitty millennials too. I think the founding fathers just would have been as bad as the rest of us. You think Ben Franklin would have eaten it at Applebee's? Absolutely not. All right? Ben Franklin is eating at some Japanese Chilean tapas fusion restaurant started by 12 year old Ecuadorian twins. He keeps yelling at John Hancock because he won't stop blowing fat vape clouds on the smoked edamame. You think Sam Adams actually would have drank Sam Adams? Fuck that. Right? <laughs> Sam Adams would have drank some dumbass micro brew, like, like a Saison with vinaigrette in it. <laughs> you guys know people like that? Yep. People that gotta drink gross beers to make up for the fact they don't have a personality? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, some of you are in here. <laughs> Fucking busted, dude. Just sitting there like, I like sour beers. <laughs> Fucking no, you don't. <laughs> like your podcast sucks and your wife left you. Like that's all, that's all it is. That's all it is. Nobody likes sour beers. That's a myth, okay? That's not real. Nobody likes sour beers. Every sour beer tastes like someone made a regular beer and then just ran it through another person's taint before they served it to them. That's all that is. I am a millennial and that means what? I'm 33 years old and I have a roommate. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I got a good roommate set up though. I, uh, I do. I've known my roommate since sixth grade. And uh, when we went, we went to Six Flags Great America in seventh grade and I actually saved my roommate's life. I gave him the Heimlich maneuver while he was choking on a hot dog and saved his life. And I want to tell you, if you ever want to get out of chores when you're in your 30s, You just gotta save a 13-year-old boy's life. That's all you gotta do. That's all you gotta do. Well, let me be more specific. You have to be 13 at the same time. Uh, you can't just be a 33-year-old man living with a 13-year-old boy, giving him the Heimlich maneuver at a moment's notice. That's how you get put on a list, you know? But I win every argument in the apartment. It's so dope. I win every argument. He came home the other day and he gets right in the living room, looks at me, goes, Martin, there's a ton of dishes in the sink and they're all yours, all right? When are you gonna get these dishes done? And I didn't miss a beat. I looked right back at him. I said, Andrew, think about how easy it would be for you to do those dishes, seeing as you don't have a quarter of a ballpark Frank lodged in your throat. <laughs> He didn't like that. He got kind of angry at that response. So I had to calm him down. I was like, dude, just chill out, all right? It's gonna be fine. Listen, just take a deep breath. Just one, just. <laughs> You're welcome for that. That was all me. That was all me. He caught me off guard right before I left for this trip though. I was about to leave and he was like, hey man, I just gotta clear the air. I feel like I should have told you this a while ago. Uh, you're kind of a loud masturbator. <laughs> yeah. And that one's on me, you know? <laughs> you can only shift the blame to other people so many times. Sometimes you gotta take responsibility for your own life, right? Like I was in his room, that was a weird night. We do. We're, uh, he's, yeah, obviously he's from Wisconsin too, uh, you know, growing up together. And it's cool, it's cool being from Wisconsin and living in Texas. Because being from a cold weather state and then moving to a warm weather state just means you get to be a condescending dick all winter about what they think cold weather is. So like the year I moved to Austin, they had one inch of ice on the ground for a day. They shut the city down. Banks closed for that shit. I had people coming up to me at work and they were like, Martin, you're never gonna believe this. I went to get into my car this morning and when I tried to open the door, <laughs> it was frozen shut. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Isn't that just the wildest thing you've ever heard? And I just always go back like, no bitch, that's Tuesday where I'm from. 
That's six months out of the year, every year of my life for 30 years, okay? Quit scraping at your windshield with a spatula, you idiot, all right? One guy got really mad at me and kind of snapped. He's like, well, Martin, we don't have the resources in Texas that you, or, you know, that you have in Wisconsin. We don't have snow plows down in Texas. So we have to shut businesses and stuff down downtown. If we had snow plows, we could go ahead and take care of these roads, and then that wouldn't be an issue. And I was being a handful that day, so I didn't say anything. But in the back of my head, I was like, snow plows? Like, it was ice. <laughs> You need a salt truck, you dumb bitch. I was calling people back home. I'm like, they don't even know the right trucks to use down here. I did that joke in Amarillo, and at the end of it, one guy just yells out, Ford! <laughs> like, all right. Really just shoehorn that in, buddy, you know? It's fun. It's fun. I am happy to be out of the cold, though. It's crazy. You guys all still fucking live up here. This is insane. <laughs> the last time I came home, it was a couple Decembers ago. My mom picked me up from the airport. And she goes, oh, man, you got here just in time. Uh, this week is the beginning of an Arctic blast. And I looked at her. I was like, fuck that. That's not a weather. That's a Gatorade flavor, OK? <laughs> Arctic blast isn't a temperature, it's what I drink when I'm hungover, okay? <laughs> if I come home and someone's like, oh yeah, it's tropical mist now, I'm gonna fruit punch you in the neck, okay? <laughs> it's cool. My mom is here tonight. Give it up for my mom one time. Yeah. Yeah. That, she, she's gonna hate that I did that. Uh, my family is really uh, cool and supportive of my comedy, though. Uh, sometimes they try to give me joke ideas. And if you uh, know comedians and you're like, oh, I got this good joke idea for my comedian friend, fucking don't give it to him, okay? <laughs> Go do it at an open mic yourself and then find out why it's terrible on your own, all right? <laughs> we don't need them. But uh, my Uncle Jim does it the most. My Uncle Jim tries to give me joke ideas a lot. And the last time he tried to give me one, he came in hot. He came in very confident. And I don't know if you like, ever have to talk to your family members when they're too confident, but like, you gotta use some tact. At least I do, I've fucked up enough Thanksgivings. Like I can't just say what I want to anymore, right? It's always like, well, I'm sorry, Uncle Jim. I don't care what Tucker Carlson told you. Like. <laughs> There's no way the gays are stealing your guns so they can use them to shoot heroin, all right? <laughs> it's not how gays work, and that's not how heroin works, okay? <laughs> 0 for 2. But Jim came in real confident. My Uncle Jim is heavy Wisconsin. My Uncle Jim is deep Wisconsin. My Uncle Jim is like a shady murder conviction away from getting his own Netflix documentary. <laughs> Wisconsin. So he comes in very confident, very excited. And he's just like, hey, Marty, Martin. Oh, Martin. Hey, Marty, Martin, Martin, hunker down real quick. Martin, listen, hey, Martin, Martin. Okay, turn the TV off in the background. I can hear it. I got to talk to you for a sec. Martin, Martin, it's that 70s show. It's in syndication. You can catch it next week. It'll be fine. Martin, 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 one sec. Um, uh, um, uh. Martin. Listen, I've been paying attention to you on the social medias, okay? You've been shopping and bopping around. I've seen you on the YouTubes, all right? Seen you on the Facebook. I clicked like a couple times, okay? Anyway, we're real proud of you back home, all right? Back in small town Wisco, we think it's real nifty that you're doing all this stuff. Anywho, something happened to me the other day. I think you might be able to use it up there, okay? Just a little drop in the bucket, all right? You're the creative type, you flesh it out. So I'm driving down the road, right? I go ahead, I take a look at my gauge. Turns out I'm running a little low on gas, all right? So I go ahead, I pull into the quick trip, you know? Take the thingamajabber out of the other thingamajabber, throw it in my car real quick, swipe my card, because I don't need to go inside, Martin. <laughs> then, machine starts asking me questions. First question, do I need a car wash? Do I need a car wash, Martin? It's the middle of February, okay? 
it's freezing stinking cold outside. I get a car wash right now, my Tahoe's coming out like a GD popsicle, okay? I need a car wash like I need another hole in the head. I mean, what in the H-E double hockey sticks are they asking me about a car wash for? You know, hot cocoa, I'll hit yes on that button. But a car wash, huh. I mean, that's wild. So that's a pretty fun thing you could use up there, you know. I think you, could. you could probably get some mileage out of that. Oh, mileage! Huh. Look what I did, Martin. Because the whole joke, I'm in my car. All right, you'll get it. Next question. Do I need a receipt? I thought he was gonna start beatboxing. <laughs> For a second. Do I need a receipt? Ha, no. <laughs> what am I gonna do? <laughs> Return the gas? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> what are you gonna take the gas out of the car, give it back to the quick? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I need to give this gas back. <laughs> Oh, Judas Priest, anyway. <laughs> Use that. Use that one in your comedy skits. Yeah, so I'm not using that shit. Uh, absolutely not. Calista Clark, it's because I am Madison's Country Q106. Cracking the beers, opening up the bloodies. Means Marty, the world's biggest Packer fan, is in studio. We're gonna check in with Marty, get all updated on Packers, the Bucks, and Madison Comedy Week. Right after Chris Stapleton, Madison's Country Q106. When I announced uh, that I wanted to do it in Madison, I did have people in Texas that were like, "Oh, like you should have hit me up. We would have, you know, we would have helped you out. We would have recorded this for you. You could have done this at our venue." And I really appreciate, it was honestly really flattering. It's really flattering to hear that from people that they they wanted uh, me to do this uh, in a way that they could have contributed. But for me, it felt, I wanted to do this in Madison so bad. I wanted to do this in a place that just, it you know, it's just home. Like, it's it's I get a physical reaction when I'm here. Ooh, we got the polka music going. And that means one thing. Marty, the world's biggest Packer fan, is joining Madison's Country Q106. Marty, to officially get things going, I have to do this. Hey! Oh, music to my ears stuff. Yes. I love that. We already poured the bloodies. I did a whole thing on Instagram asking our fans, which vodka should I put in for Marty, the world's biggest Packer fan? Are you all right with Sveka? Oh, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> hey, to, to, to quote my good buddy Bill Shakespeare, a rose by any other name, you know, uh, great <laughs> vodka, quality stuff. I love it. Well, Marty, we're so excited to catch up with you. Let's get right into it. Were you nervous about Aaron Rodgers not returning to Green Bay? Steph, I got to be honest with you, uh, not for a single second. Mm. No, uh, 100% the whole way through. I, I, you know, I thought uh, Aaron was going to come back for sure. Uh, the big thing, it's like, <laughs> buddy, where else are you going to play, you know? <laughs> they said he, he might go to Denver, and, yep. you know, okay, sure, the guy that can't chug a beer is going to go to a city made of weed. <laughs> yes. I don't think that's going to work out so hot for anybody. It was fun. It's, it's always a good time. Uh, Steph has such a great attitude, and, like, I don't know, it's fun doing cheesy little Wisconsin shit while you're home, you know, uh, to perform in the same building that has records for you. Cardi B and Godsmack, like easily two of my favorite artists. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I am, I am a huge sports fan. That's probably the thing I miss about Wisconsin the most is going to sports games. I, I got to go to a Bucks NBA Finals game this year. It was, it was amazing. I cried more over basketball than I have deaths in my own family that day. Like that was one of the most emotional days of my life. And you get into comedy, and not everybody in comedy cares about sports. And I have so many of my friends that will just mock me about how much I love sports. I call them sports ballers. I'm sure there's some of you here tonight. We're like, you'll be watching a game, right? And one of your friends comes up to you and goes, oh, look at your, look at your little sports match. Wow, how cute. Your little, those, those men on the screen that don't know who you are that you care so much about. 
This game must be so important to your life. It must have such a direct impact on everything else in your life, your little sports game. How many, how many point runs did your team get today? <laughs> you sports ball, cute. And I hate that shit. I can't stand it because they're right, you know? <laughs> They are, they're right. Sports don't matter in my everyday life. Sports don't have a real impact on what I do, you know, day in and day out. But you know what else falls in, like under that umbrella? Fucking 90% of everything on this earth, all right? <laughs> life is tri trivial and arbitrary, and that's about it. My least favorite thing about people that use the term sports ball is those are the same people that want to talk to you about their Harry Potter fan fiction for 45 minutes. <laughs> It's the same shit. It's the exact same shit, all right? You don't get to make fun of my shirt because it says Packers across the chest when you're wearing a shirt that says fucking Gryffindor across the chest, okay? That's a Hufflepuff move, all right? You don't get to laugh at me because I freak out when Aaron Rodgers breaks his collarbone. You have a conniption fit when Ned Stark dies at the end of season one of Game of Thrones. Those people aren't even mad for Sean Bean. Some of you don't know who Sean Bean is. That's the guy that played Ned Stark, all right? That's a real human being that lost his job that day. Just crying over a fictional character. I'm not saying you can't be into that kind of stuff. I'm just saying I'm not gonna give a shit about Gandalf until he plays for the Washington Wizards, you know? Once Dumbledore can Dumble Dunk, I'll read those dumbass books. It's, uh, it's hard talking about Wisconsin sports down in Texas, though. They don't get it. I keep trying to explain sausage races. They get very confused. Yeah. No. For those of you who don't know, uh, in the middle of the sixth inning for our Major League Baseball team, Woo! Uh, we dress five grown men that have full-time jobs and pay taxes into tubular mascot costumes and then make them race competitively around the field. You guys probably don't know what the winning sausage gets, right? They don't really publicize that. The winning sausage uh, gets fucking nothing. <laughs> nothing. They're just doing it for the love of the game and that's it. My favorite part of the sausage race is every sausage is decorated like a mildly offensive stereotype. <laughs> based on where the sausage is from. So I'll give you some examples. Uh, there's, uh, there's Italian, right? Italian has a big bushy mustache and a chef's hat. Okay. Uh, there's chorizo, that's the Mexican sausage. Uh, he's got a big bushy mustache and a sombrero. Okay. Bratwurst, that's the German sausage. He's got a big bushy mustache and he's a Holocaust denier. Like it's all... It's all fun little stereotypes. They always gotta separate the German and the Polish sausages before the race starts. Some of y'all didn't see World War II. I think some of y'all didn't, didn't catch that right there. Read a book, you know? I, uh, I always cheer for chorizo. I always cheer for the Mexican sausage because the sombrero is the most aerodynamically disadvantaged hat that any of the sausages has to wear. So that means in order for chorizo to win the race, he's got to work harder and run faster than all the other sausages. I don't know if Clements wanted this kind of social commentary in a brat race, but <laughs> si se puede, let's get after it. You know? <laughs> That's right. Olay, you know? So I'm anywhere between like 12 and 15 Miller High Life's in by the sixth inning. That's Wisconsin math for you. Uh, Sconinomics, if you will. And this is the loudest I get during a baseball game. Because as soon as that race starts, I'm just like, Chorizo! <laughs> chorizo! <laughs> Mas rápido, chorizo! <laughs> chorizo, eres salchicha numero uno! Andale, 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 andale! Oh, 
every game. <laughs> Last game I went to, there was a guy a couple rows up who got kind of mad at me. And after the polar sausage won, he just turns around and goes, yeah, USA! Like, that guy missed all of World War II. You know? <laughs> the whole thing. This is like the coolest thing, you know? You get to spend a day at the ballpark and you're always with your family or you're with your friends, you're with people you care about. And it's like, life just like slows down for like five or six hours. And you're just, you're just here, you're present. You know, you're people watching, you're socializing. It's everything outside of baseball that's like, makes the whole game like the experience that it is. It's so much fun, you know? It's this, it's like, it's grilling out with your buddies in a parking lot. Like it's, it's such a, like mundane or kind of unsensational or uneventful things that are just also really cool and fun and like it's just such a pure experience I love how confident uh, Wisconsinites are about shit that doesn't matter. It's so much fun coming up here and talking to you guys. Like, cheese. <laughs> Everybody up here, I have never, like, you go to other places in the country and they just don't understand it. They don't get it. And I, I'm the same way. Like, I'm so proud of our cheese. I'm so proud of it. It sounds fucking corny, but it's true. I had a friend visit me from England a few years ago and uh, the first thing I did was I took her to get cheese curds over on Capitol Square. And we get to the bar, and the bartender asks, uh, or she asks the bartender, uh, she's like, so what is a cheese curd? And he breaks it down. He's like, well, it's a little piece of squeaky cheese. Uh, it's deep, you know, uh, covered in beer batter, and then deep fried, served with a little bit of mustard and ranch. And she looks back at him, and she goes, well, what if I don't like that? And he looks her dead in the eye and just goes, no, and then walks out of the room. <laughs> That's incredible. That's amazing. That's not even a yes or no question. He still got the answer right. But I am, I'm a, I'm a huge cheese head. One of the greatest days of my life uh, happened right before I moved. I won a cheese raffle. Yeah. yeah, it's cool that I don't have to explain to you guys what that is. So fun. I did this joke in Kansas City and this woman just looked terrified the entire time. She's like, that's not a thing. But I did, I won a cheese raffle. It was like a gorgeous Sunday in November and uh, my buddy calls me right away in the morning and he's like, uh, Martin, what do you got going on today? What's going on with you today? And I go, I don't know, Sam. I just woke up. I don't really have any plans yet. Uh, why, what's going on? And he goes, oh, well, nothing. I just wanted to know if you wanted to start drinking. And I go, Sam, it's 8.45 in the morning on a Sunday, the Lord's Day. And you want to start drinking right now? Are you fucking crazy? No. So we met up at 9 o'clock. <laughs> no. 
We got a couple bars into the day, and uh, we finally settled at one bar when the Packer game started. And there's one guy walking around the bar. He's got a big kitchen apron on, a big handlebar mustache, and then a bunch of paddles with numbers on them right next to his junk. So what you did was you gave $2 to junk paddle guy, and then you pull one out. You do it quick, and you don't make eye contact. Those are the rules. Now, if your junk paddle number, they're gonna spin a big wheel behind the bar. And if your junk paddle number hits the wheel number, you win cheese. Martin, lucky number three. How you guys doing tonight? That was me. That was me. That's right. That's right. I'll, uh, I'll sign autographs after the show. It's fine. It's fine. So I, I won this cheese, uh, this cheese raffle set up. It was cave age cheddar, summer sausage, and artisanal crackers. It was like a hipster Lunchable. It was delicious. <laughs> Fun fact about your friend Martin is after about six Bloody Marys, I get a little bit forgetful. I left the cheese at the bar, guys. I know, I know. And I know some of you out there are fucking with me right now, okay? But I know there's a few very concerned people in the audience that are just like, wait, Martin, what happened to that cheese? So I left the cheese at the bar and I, I, you know, I lost it. I think it's the closest I'll ever feel to like a mom that loses her kid at a state fair. Right. Just the one day she didn't put Tanner in that fucked up harness, you know? It's one of those leash kids, you know? Also, if you're putting your kid on a leash and then walking that kid around in public, like... You're just setting them up to be into weird sex stuff later on in life. You know? That's just science, all right? Think about it. Think about it, you know? You're three or four years old, you know? You just learned how to walk confidently. It's the first time you've ever had real freedom in your life. And then your parents, the only people that have given you love and affection and attention, but also the only people that have given you rules and structure and discipline, just shackle a harness onto your body and then tie a rope to that harness that they have full control over all the time. Like, that shit's gonna be hot in your 20s, dude, you know? Yeah. And keep that kid safe as a toddler, sure, but they'll be calling somebody else daddy before they hit 30. Yeah. That's right. All right, I was a harness kid. Uh, <laughs> you guys were looking at me weird. I got some websites bookmarked. We can talk about it later. We got really far away from cheese, didn't we? Okay, circle back. So I left the cheese at the bar. I ran all the way back to the bar. And I use the term run generously because I'm full of Bloody Marys and bar popcorn at this point. But I get back into the bar and the bartender's already looking at me as soon as I get in there. And he's just like, hey, you're the guy that forgot his cheese, aren't you? I was like, yeah, that's me, guilty as charged. He goes, okay, well, you're pretty lucky because uh, nobody took it. We were able to grab it and put it in the back for you, you know? So uh, I'll, I'll go grab that for you now, I guess. And they did, they went, they got me the cheese, everything worked out just fine. But he was using this attitude the entire time that I'm really familiar with. I think it's really uh, prevalent in the Midwest and especially in Wisconsin. It's this attitude that's like, hey, listen, I'm gonna be really helpful to whatever your situation is right now, but I'm also gonna be kind of a dick <laughs> about how helpful I'm being, you know? I'm used to it happening uh, later in the year, right? Where it's like there's snow on the ground, maybe your car's snowed in on the side of the road, you're shoveling it out in the morning before you gotta get to work, and then one of your neighbors comes out and sees you and he's just looking at you and you look back and he just says, you know, uh, if you pay attention to the winter advisory warning from the night before, uh, you'll know about the alternate side parking. You can park on the right side of the road and then this kind of thing won't happen to you. And only after he gets that out of his system is he actually gonna help you get your car out of the spot, right? <laughs> right, yeah. I call that Wisconsin-descending. That's it, we fucking did it.
Thank you all so much for coming out. This was a fucking blast. Give it up for Jesse, Jake, everybody that helped me record this. Give it up for yourselves. Thank you all so much for coming out. This meant the world to me. I had a fucking blast. All right. Have a good night. Be easy. Let's go get fucked up. From Atlanta, all the ways that we changed both our lives for the better. You know, somewhere in the back of my mind, I think I've known you since the beginning of time. I'm getting corny in my old age. Both plays in that old chase. Don't wanna end up dead in the rat race. Rather lay up on the beach, somewhere in the reef. I know you get mad when I blow trees, huh? It's in the weather. Come on, come on, come on. Jump on, we can do it. Slow as you yeah. Make some goals, got in touch with my soul Take my hand, little mama, let's go I know I had you sweating for a little bit We broke up and you know I'm never celibate But little them had your smile, couldn't match your eyes What can I say? I love, 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 Gemini's Even when you're talking ish I still wanna lay you down quick Till we both kick back with a J and Netflix so on It's in the weather If you a crazy Aries, baby, stand up It doesn't matter your sign Cause you also fine Just hop in my ride so we can take off If you a bad Pisces, put your hands up If you a crazy Aries, baby, stand up It doesn't matter your sign Because you also fine Just hop in my ride so we can take so off Let's go on. It's in the weather Hop on, baby Jump on, we can do it slowly. We'll go as slow as you like, come on Uh-huh, uh-huh Get on, yeah, uh, and get on, uh, get your hands on, girl.